Jared. <laughs> What's up, dude? Um, all right. So for any of you just joining, uh, this is my buddy, Jared Barnes. Uh, he is an awesome producer. Um, and you landed a placement with us. Uh, is this your first time landing with us or have you landed before? Yeah, it's my first time. And, uh, I guess it's beginner's luck. Maybe it was my first, um, few joints that I sent in. So that works. Out. Oh, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Well, big congrats to you, man. Um, so sure. we'll listen to that track later on again. Congrats. It's awesome. Uh, but, um, you know, you said beginner's luck, but I mean, the tracks killing all the stuff you're sending in is dope. Um, so where, dude? Uh, let's take it back. Where Where are you from? And let's like just talk about you know your you know the come up career. I know it, like before we started, you were like, "Yo, the come up <laughs> is still happening." <laughs> still, still in process. But uh, are you, where Where are you from? I'm from Jersey, Central, like Piscataway, Edison. Uh, born. In, um, yeah, I started playing keys at a real young age, like 10, 10, 11. Okay. I picked up trumpet. So I've always been music. My family's pretty musical, too. My, my daddy's, my mom and aunt sing. So it's always been in, in the blood. That's dope. Uh, same, same here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I took it to the next step. I went to Berkeley. Wait. Yeah. We both went to Berkeley. <laughs> we both went to Berkeley. Yeah, I was going to bring Wait that a up. second. I was just talking to Chong, one of our other members, and she went to Berkeley, and it turns out we were there the same year. What, what year were you yeah. there? Yeah, uh, I was there from 09 to 2013. We, so we no, we w there was like a year because I was there 2012 to 13. Oh yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely remember um, um, Chong. Dude, uh, it's very pot. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I might have seen you around. It was crazy. <laughs> Small dude, world. Where, where were you living? I was, I was in the 150 building. Me too. <laughs> what? Wait, what floor? Yeah. Actually, in 2012, that's when I moved out. So I wasn't in okay. the... Uh, so from, from 09 to uh, 2010, I was in 150 from like... Yeah, for, for like... Okay. What, what, yeah. what floors? Which... Uh, how, I'm, and when asking that, I'm trying to ask how many rats did you see on it on a daily? <laughs> Luckily, I didn't see that many. I was on the sixth floor. Uh, okay. Yeah, they didn't make their way up there. Little, yeah. little fuckers were always on the third floor with me. It was terrible. <laughs> um, I dropped out after a year, but there was this one time in the calf, uh, the cafeteria, any of you you know, listening, but, um, <laughs> there was this dude, I swear there was a rat. It had to be, this thing was like two feet long, bro. It was ridiculous. Might as well have been a possum and oh, all. So <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I was, um, I, you know, I was just hanging out with my buddies. We were eating lunch. And then all of a sudden from the other side of the cafeteria, we just hear this girl scream at the top of her lungs. Oh no. Like, and it was, I mean, she was a vocalist. So she, I mean, she could project, dude. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it was like, it was a scream, but then everybody, it was like this dead silence. We saw this massive rat just jump like boom, boom, boom <laughs> from the back of the calf into the kitchen. And then my friends and I just looked at each other and we're like, all right, we're done with lunch. <laughs> they just left. We're like, <laughs> we're like, I'm done. I think that's my cue. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I was like, I don't think we can top today, um, the, dude. I don't know. Gotta give it to Boston. <laughs> there's so many things about Boston that it's like shit just runs different there. <laughs> yeah, everything <laughs> is more hardcore than it should be. <laughs> Definitely a different kind of city, but uh, oh my was, god, came into myself and developed my sound. So I, I got you know. Uh. Know what, City so what what so you were there all four years how how was that because i dropped out after a year good for you man <laughs> I'm, I'm still paying for this shit yeah I, I talked to chong i was like i was like yeah i left after a year and she and she was like good for you man <laughs> we all got the same same uh same vibe yeah we we had i got like a kind of like a partial scholarship it was next to nothing it, i was and i was telling chong i was like i would have rather them not give anything then that just like it, it was like a it was like a slap in the face i was like you're gonna call this a scholarship like really really yeah i had something similar it, it was on a higher end but it wasn't good for you it wasn't oh, a I, fucking presidential so no yeah because we saw the oh did you i don't know if you saw this but like there were so at berkeley anybody listening there's you could get a presidential scholarship yeah. and in other you know colleges it's called a full ride because it's it's cool. Like it's a big deal, but you don't walk around like as a celebrity basically, but <laughs> like every kid who had a presidential scholarship. Knew. Yeah. You knew. Cause it was yeah. like, it was this respect thing. Like they were basically a God walking among you, but it was also like severe envy <laughs> because, yeah. cause I don't know about you, but every presidential scholar that I saw, they played like, 
you know, I say this as respectfully as I can. <laughs> they played an instrument that they would never gig with. You were just like, why are, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got, I mean, you got a full ride off of an accordion. Come on, dude. <laughs> Come on. Yes. They, they're definitely um, breaking societal norms, so. dude. I, yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like you both, you both, and I and Chong from earlier, we all just like made it work. But <laughs> so, yeah. what what'd you get out of the four years? How you said you really found your sound there? So um, at first, it was a struggle a little bit because uh, I went there with the intention of being a production major. Okay, and what yeah. they didn't tell you um, when you get there, you have to apply, you have to audition to be in a, a production major. So. I not only did I have to audition to get into the school, I had to now audition to do the major that I wanted. Dude, and yeah. Spoiler alert, I didn't make it. I, I wasn't a... Um, yeah, I didn't make it. I tried twice. I tried for Dude, an, dude an I, I played a hard ball my first semester and got in, but no. I was I was a dick about it. So what I did... I'm sorry. I'm just breaking into it, but we had like the same exact journey. Yeah. I, I went... I... um. So the the dean of the music production and engineering department, I forgot his name, but it turned out that one of the um, studios that I had worked at, um, like interned at, like I, I session drums and like assisted on some on some records, it's called Echo mm -hmm. Mountain here in Asheville, North Carolina, nice. and I um, I saw that the the board. Um, forgot what board it was. I think it was just an, it was some sort of Neve. Um, but um, they bought that board from Sunset Sound out in LA. That's where he worked. Wow. And I had I literally brought a CD and I was like, Hey man, I'm here for MP and E. If I can't get in this program, I'm dropping out. Like it's just not worth it for me. I'm here within my. It was like the first week when everybody was like meeting each other. You know. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like learning how to do drugs and shit, and I'm like negotiating with the dean. Yeah, that that's the the right mentality. I was I was, I was that shit, <laughs> yeah, dude. It was just so expensive. I was like, if I can't get in this school, like in because I I didn't like I was like yeah I I didn't know I had to like audition again. I was like what? Yeah. So yeah. I I gave the CD. I was like, here's records I've worked on. Here's a picture of me with the board that you worked on. If I can't be yeah. an MPD, I'm leaving now. Like I still have like the next ten days or whatever it is to get mm -hmm. out and like, there's no problem, you know? So, but it's, it's a hustle there, dude. Like it's hard. And once you get in, uh, there was at the time there was only 12 studios. So you had to like compete with everybody. In the oh my God. To get studio time. Dude. Then, I never, I never even worked in one of the studios there. Cause they were always packed. I like recorded my friends in like the stairwell in 150 Cause there was good acoustics. <laughs> yeah. You, you had to make do, man. You really did. Yeah. Have to make I, I didn't get into production, but I, I, continued into songwriting instead cool and because of my connects i i always found myself in the studios and like i made friends with a lot of producers there. that that's the thing it's like once you meet your crew there mm -hmm. and just meet the people doing it you can usually it's not like you can get the degree you want because the degree doesn't matter anyways but it's you can <laughs> you you can usually figure out your way to get into the classes or whatever that you want because it's they claim to be a real college but it's it's not it's like it's, it's the a, industry yeah, it's it's the industry. It's a conservatory that is in the industry. You know, so. and I, I definitely don't uh, like. I don't want to bad talk if I'm coming off that way, but like, I'll shit talk Berkeley for you. All good, bro. <laughs> no, I love Berkeley, but you know, and it was just like I I um I met a lot of like lifelong friends. Same, just, you know, it was like a dojo, you mm -hmm. know, steel sharp and steel. And I wouldn't be as nasty as I am on beats if I wasn't. Yeah. You know, at the well, field, so you know, it's it's one of those things where you. You know, I felt like everybody who was at Berkeley was the music kid in their high school. You know, they exactly. they and they all thought they were special, and then they showed up here. Like for me, because I was the drummer in my high school, I was the drummer. You know, um, and I did like some production stuff, but everybody like primarily knew me as the drum guy. And I showed up at Berkeley, and I saw the other drummers, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. they really want to be drummers." Like. Uh -huh. I was like, I want to, like, I want to tour. I want to, but I was like, they, all they do, they want to, yeah. this is all they want to do. It's a sobering wake up call. Like, my first yeah. few there, I was, I thought I was the shit. I mean, I was back where I'm from. <laughs> right, right. My own horn, but, you know, I was, I was that guy got there and I got to hit the shit. Like, right. And so it, it, like, put things in a perspective of, like, yo, I got to get in the practice room like 12 hours a day. Like, yes. when everybody else is out partying, 
mm-hmm. which they didn't really do because everybody was just like crying in practicing rooms or in practice you rooms. Can't, you can't cram you, for those uh, those you, finals. You really can't cram like right. You know, Bach and and like Chick Corea. You can't. <laughs> yeah, you you can't like you can't write notes on your leg and put your leg up and cheat by putting your pant leg up. I'm saying from experience in high school, but, uh, (laughs) but yeah, no, it was definitely like, it was really cool because you realized really quick if you were really going to go for it or Mm -hmm. this was not the path that was for you. And I saw some people in the first semester just have like total panic attacks and drop out. And like, they're, you know, they're successful. They're doing other things in life, but it was like a, it it really, I love Berkeley for the fact that it really put you in a pressure cooker of either you're going to really kick ass at this or just don't bother. Yeah. It's no, it really is how it is. And yeah, just in general life, like you really want to go after something, you got to like give it your all. Yeah. Cause it, it put you in a standard. You know, it's like, if you're, you know, and net, it was when you and I were there, it was different because online communities, meeting people online, it, it's, it's not what it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Skype, but like, I don't know, every other Skype call I had had massive issues and people would just, it would be like, but uh, like that, (laughs) that's what a Skype call was. (laughs) Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, a lot of times I would just call people on the phone and then we would look at each other on webcam. And when the webcam decided to load, <laughs> we would see each other, but we would just talk on the phone. Um, yeah, good times. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, Berkeley was definitely, I, I think overall, at pros absolutely outweighed the cons. But oh. um, yeah, so uh, so you ended up, uh, you graduated from Berkeley. Mm-hmm. And yeah, well, yeah. Uh, came back home because there wasn't really um, many opportunities for what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. In Boston, at least. So, yeah. Back home with a game plan. Um, and I just started to build my catalog um, and like find my, my sound because I always wanted to be a producer, but I didn't know exactly what kind of producer I wanted to be. So then I took right. the, time to do, the time at Berkeley, just getting the techniques and stuff down. And then finally, I can get the ideas that I have in my head out into the, the real world. Right. I, I just to do that now. So now it was just a matter of building a catalog, you know, hitting the streets, running, and I, I managed to get in with some people in New York and whatnot. I managed to get some placements for like Freddie Wong. Hell yeah! Uh, I'd be in on my DJ, and I, I ended up getting the gold plaque for that. That uh, mix. Dude, place. congrats, man! That's awesome, Mazel Tov. Sure, appreciate it. It's, it's been a grind, though. years and yep. years, just unrewarded, um, just like constant just nonstop work and yep. you got to push past that like initial like damn i'm not really getting any money for this yeah and i i don't know if you experienced the same thing um for the you know bigger records that i you know gratefully been a part of like it a lot of things started to happen just as i thought things were crashing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like i was like you know this corner of my career is getting like really tough and like i i you know was doing well in publishing, doing well in some other things at the time. But like, I was getting to a point where I just like felt like I was in a stalemate. And then it, it's not like I, you know, you're probably like, like me where it's like, there isn't a plan B, you know, I don't really have the option. I'm in a corner. This is the only thing I can do. Really good um, what I do, so it would be kind of a waste if I, <laughs> yeah, well, or you know, I don't, like, I don't even know what else I could do. Like I have no work experience. I've only been self-employed. Honestly, any company would be doing themselves a disservice by, co- by hiring me. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I would make terrible decisions. You, you don't want me there. Um, I wouldn't even show up. It would be awful. Um, so, <laughs> but you know, when things were getting really tough and I was just exhausted and at like kind of my wits end, it just so happened that I like powered through and it's like, yo, like, Hey, we, sh- uh, do you want to be on this? Like, Hey, this is happening. Do you want to be on this record? Hey, this is happening. Do you want to be, I'm like, what? And then it just started snowballing from there. I, yeah. I, 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 did that like sort of stuff happen to you? I feel like that's oh, yeah. pretty... Yeah, it's like kind of standard. It's like just when you're at your very end yeah. and you're just like, I don't even know what the fuck else is getting. Things come like, through. At the last minute, like Hail Mary. And it's like, right, cool. yeah. Um, I'm going to just get a full time job and um, hold it down for a little bit. And then, you know, the, the ether, the yep. universe had other plans. And then it, it's like, here's the opportunity. You can go you, work in LA for free for three months. And yeah. You, you, you gotta, <laughs> people don't want to. Like they, they think that it's only them going through it. Like all of their heroes are people who have like massive credits 
whether it's like with artists or in sync for brands, you know, it's, it's all the same hustle. Like mm-hmm. I recently worked on a record with future or for future and little baby, uh, awesome. in Russian. It was like a, it was a collab, all three of them. But at the same time, you know, I was really, you know, going full on in sync and I really wanted to get a music supervision gig. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, really kind of getting to a point of like, damn, like this is getting really tough. Like I, maybe I'm just like not in these circles, maybe it's not going to work. And then you find your crew and that's, I got my first supervision gig technically for a Burberry commercial. And that was like, holy shit. But it, it took yeah. so yeah. long and it was like years of like, mm-hmm. I, you know, of Brand. people. Brand. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not that you question yourself, but there's so much in life where you think it's like going against you and people don't talk about that. Or if they're going yeah. through it, they think it's only for them. Mm-hmm. And also there's, it, it really is important about who's on too, because yeah. the people that don't do music, they don't really understand the type of mental fortitude that this takes. Mm-hmm. Like you have to, you're going to, you're going to hear no so many times that the yeah. average person is just going to be like, all right, it's not for me. You have to keep yeah. going. Otherwise- well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny because like for years, I think now it's more hip to like talk about business and music. Um, I think, you know, the current generation, you know, Gen Z and like some millennials, you know, have a different idea of business within music than let's say Gen X or boomers had. Whereas back in the day, it was like, you know, art is for the artists and the business is for the business people. And at, you know, in their life, that made sense because if you wanted to get a job, you went to college, it all worked out. You got a job. That was it. Millennials, Gen Z. Yeah. Millennials. It was interesting. Once when we got to college, we realized, oh shit, maybe this, like we saw the writing on the wall. We saw like student loans pile up. We saw a lot of people move back in with their parents. And we were just like, I don't know. Like maybe like I got to figure out some stuff for myself. Maybe college isn't the end point for me to move forward, you know, and I have to do more. And Gen Z kind of just went into the market knowing that they were screwed. So like, (laughs) so now it's like, (laughs) right, right. And, you know, I think now people look at music business and they're like, instead of when you get a track on an Adidas ad, you know, back in the day, it's like, wow, you sold out. Now it's like, holy shit, dude, congrats. That's, that's so cool. You made it, you know? Um, it's a different mentality because like huge shift in the it, if you are in music, like you are your own business and a lot of people don't want to admit it. So like, I, I love talking to entrepreneurs, even in not in, in music, like yes. you learn so much, you know? Yeah. It's very synonymous. Yeah. Um, and it makes yeah. you not feel as alone. Like if, if I talk to like an owner of a coffee shop, I'm going to connect more with them than somebody who only writes songs and they don't do anything else. A lot of times. Cause like, yeah. just like a hobbyist songwriter versus somebody who's building something from nothing, you know, cause that's the difference between a music career and just making music. Exactly. Yeah. You, you got, you have to invent like your own path. That's really what right. it is. There's no so, set, like I, everybody's course is different and you just yeah. got to carve your own out of, out of, you know, the ether and whatnot. So you said that you were getting to a point where you're like, yo, I got to maybe figure something, something out. And then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, and then things will happen and, and then it'll like, reinforce your beliefs like oh maybe i can do this you know mm. and um every now and then uh, it, that'll happen um because i i noticed that this this music thing sort of like moves in waves like you have really yeah. good moments where you're like yo i feel on top of the world i'm getting flued out <laughs> yeah you know working on projects here and there and then um something like uh the p word happens and then we're stuck for like a year and some change yep and then you gotta you kind of have to figure it out and by ear. Yeah, it's it's hard because like the when you're going through it, it's often hard to know that this is part of the process. So it, because the the part of that process is being in a moment where you don't know if it's gonna work or not. <laughs> yeah, you know, like <laughs> this past year, mm-hmm. um, I think you know we talked about it in the group. We're building a new platform for that pitch. Um, if you're listening to this in the future, I am recording this on what's the day? We're in September of 2022. Um, yeah. But the past year and a half, almost two years, I've, we've been building a new tech plan and like for for that pitch to help licensing be even easier for everyone. Yeah, um, awesome. it's, I really appreciate what y'all, what y'all got going on. Well, you don't, you don't even know half of it, bro. When the new thing launches, you're going to freak out. But 
<laughs> but like the, but what I'm saying is like the, you know, I'm a producer first. Like I don't consider myself a tech person. Like everybody has tried calling that pitch like a startup or so, so like startup community bros. Well, yeah. like, oh, how much fun are you got? I'm like, I run a small business and I help my friends make money from their music. And that's the end of it. I don't, mm. I don't care to do more than that. I just want to help everybody, you know, make music on their laptop or wherever they're making it and make money from it so they can make more music. Like that's, that's it. I don't care about, I don't want to sell the business. I've had offers for people to buy. I don't care. Like, it's not the point. And so like you see these companies that like will invest like all this money into like this crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And you know, whereas over here, I'm just like, I'm a producer. Like we're building out this new tech platform, but like, I don't have 10 million in the bank to build out tech shit. So it's like, okay, how can we build this for everybody? You know? And like, mm -hmm. there's been times the past year where I'm like, yo, this is like, I've had those thoughts, like those moments of like, fuck, like this is, yeah. these are, you know, these are challenges that I've never faced yet, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think as long as you're the type of person that wants to grow both personally and professionally, you're going to have those moments, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's growing pains. It's yeah. And it's, I think people like us, we never, uh, there's, there's pros and cons to this, but we don't have those moments where we're just like, yep, I have enough. Everything is good. It's like, no, I want to like, I want to do no. more. This is like, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's like fun and exciting, but it can quickly become stressful. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, um, but that's, that's awesome. So you got that Fetty Wap, uh, placement, uh, a couple others, which is yeah. dope. Um, mm -hmm. so you are making a bunch of music for yourself and playing shows a lot now. Uh, yeah, what's kind of going on with that and how's the scene in big. Jersey and, you know, uh, that's you know, big, I think yeah, you're in the Brooklyn scene as well. Uh, I'm, I'm getting out there, but like really my, my past, like the past few years of my career spent mainly just uh, chasing placements and, and, um, you know, chasing rappers and R and B artists and pop singers and stuff. So that gets stressful, you know, because, mm -hmm. um, uh, if you're not in those, in the right circles, you kind of get like, like blocked and, yep. and stuff like that and gatekeep. So, so I, I kind of put my, uh, my solo music on kind of a back burner for a while. Um, but that's been changing. I took a nice chunk of time off <laughs> to just recalibrate and refocus and, and just plan my next steps. And, and now like definitely getting back to the solo catalog and, and put music doing shows. Um, yeah, next week, Wonderville, if you're in town, if you're in Brooklyn, pull up. Uh, it, it's going to be live, but um, wait, yeah. Where, where yeah. are you playing again? It cut out. Where are you playing? Wonderville in Brooklyn. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't have the exact address because I'm, I'm in trash. I'm new. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be dope, dude. Yeah, I um, get adjusted to promo and all that. But. <laughs> uh, you'll get it, man. And it's like anything. It's like over time, you just get better and better and better. You learn your lessons, and then you kind of build your systems and like processes of like, all right, I'm going to do this because it works. It's worked in the past. I'm not going to yeah. do this because that didn't work in the past, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> so, but I think that's just, you know, how music and, you know, making money from your music and uh, learning more about the business of music um, yeah. is, is just, you know, you learn your lessons over time and then you have your bag of tricks and you're like, all right, this works for this direction. I'm going to keep doing that. And you just grow, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, right. yep. And most of it's not sexy. It's just like, just, I'm <laughs> going to keep hitting it. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, well, that's awesome, dude. Um, we have a bunch of members in, uh, in New York. Uh, I lived in crown Heights and then moved to upper West side for a while. Um, so very familiar with, with the land of the big fruit, uh, New York anyways. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, what I want to do, I want to listen to the track that you just landed with us. Um, again, you're killing it. So big mazel tov, bro. I'm proud of you. Um, so let's listen to this. We'll talk about the track a little bit. Um, and then we'll give more info on that show. All right. Dope. All right. Sweet. So this is, um, called, wait, let me pull up the name. Because I do not have this open because I am unprepared and a terrible person. Um, wait a second. Da, 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 da. It oh. is. I'm just. I'm really. Ma I'm making good time here, dude. Wait. <laughs> oh my god. My folder is just not okay. It's called Zen. You could have just told me that. No, you, you had it. You had to make, let you know that you, know, you got it. You got it under control, <laughs> dude. I can do. I can do like all this stuff. Uh, like on here, there's like a media player. Check. Check this out. Watch. Watch. Bro, it's crazy. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get ready. I'm gonna do a drum roll for this. All right, so now we're gonna play. <laughs> we're gonna play Zen. <laughs> All 
<laughs> All right, this is Zen. Here we go. You put me in a trance. <laughs> You're trying to hypnotize me. That's vibes. That's vibes, dude. That was like fantastic. It. What? Appreciate it. What was your What was your process on that? How was uh, How was creating that like? How long did it take? What was? Did you have it lying <laughs> around, or did you just make it for the hell of it? It took uh, three years to make that, actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, yeah, but like all jokes aside, um, that was an old joint I did like back in 2018, 2019, something, okay. something around that time and um i like the textures and mm. i was just in a space where i was making a bunch of lo-fi and, and vibey stuff and you know stuff that you would you know just you know study homework to and stuff and production analysis bro <laughs> just so, yeah, in that space and I, I went back into the hard drive and i was like oh i never did anything with this. yeah so i just took it remixed it revamped it i switched the drums up completely and yeah from there it was um yeah three years in, in three hours <laughs> <laughs> so that that's awesome man because like i you know just being a producer it's like if you open up my hard drive i mean firstly you'd be disgusted how unorganized it is but after after you get past that <laughs> and be like how does mark function there's like thousands of tracks that like i just haven't utilized anywhere so i'm just like i'm cooking up stuff and i'm like where do i what do i yeah. do with it all right I'm just going to save it. So that's, that's awesome because it's like, you just had this sitting there and you didn't do anything with it. And you're like, all right, I'm just going to, this will work for this. I'll just finish it up and upload it. And bam, now it's going to make you money. So like, place. like look at right. That. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. It's like every, 
I think you would agree with this is that most of our friends who are completely broke through music make a lot of music, but they don't do anything. Yeah. The point is you have to put it some. It's like it's building. Gonna, it's going to be in somebody's inbox or somebody's like. Yeah. Or something. You got to. Well, Turn it around, otherwise. It's like imagine building a bunch of condos and never renting them out. <laughs> it's like, well, you could yeah. say you're in real estate, but you don't have the same money that other people got, right? So what's going on? <laughs> It's it's no different. It's like make a lot of music, but unless you're putting it in places, mm -hmm. don't complain that it's not making any money. So it's it's just a matter of getting your tracks into different places. So that's awesome that you already had this lying around and you're like, all right, I'm just gonna polish it up and yeah, let's see what we can do with it. So that's dope, man. I'm really excited that's about that. So you said you were kind of in a, a phase of just making a lot of lo fi a few years back? Um well back then I, I don't even know what I was on, man, to be honest. I was just making all kinds of weird shit. And I just so happened to randomly find that because I, I, I keep a log of all the beats that I made nice. throughout the years on my iTunes. I went back years. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. okay. This will work. So, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was doing all kinds of stuff. Like, I, I was on a lo-fi tip recently, a few, nice. few weeks ago. I'm like, yeah. Cool. Well, I mean... I, I think some of the, it's funny because a lot of people look at artists and just say, well, they're, um, you know, they're like the star of the show. But if you think about it, like nowadays, I mean, there's a lot of producers that are artist projects, and they, but all they do is produce, you know, um, <clears throat> some of my favorite, like lo-fi producers, Eric Lau, Freddie, Freddie Joachim, if you're familiar with them, um, question also an awesome, um, calm trues. There's like a lot of out uh, K Trinata. We all are aware. Um, oh, yeah. But there's like, I, I think this is like kind of a general movement over the past couple of years. It's like, we're going to oh, look sure. back on this time and be like, this was the era of the producers, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, so. this is a definitely, it's, it's different. It's a different headspace than what I'm normally accustomed to because I, I do, um, well, my, my solo stuff is more um, aggressive and uh, it's, it's very bass heavy. Like my yeah. stuff can be a mixture of like soulful R&B stuff, but like it has a grit to it. So then yeah. the low high space was, was definitely something to get used to. Yeah. But I had to like re remind myself, like, don't go too crazy on this bass right now. Well, well, what's, what's funny too, that people don't realize is like, if you're an artist and you're just promoting a single artist brand, you have to stay with that brand, you know, Lady yeah. Gaga, you know, if she comes out with a metal record, people are gonna be like, the fuck? Like, what is, yeah. is she on drugs? Like, what is going on? <laughs> you know, but if you're yeah. a producer, you can have a bunch of different like artist monikers or like brands for yeah. different sounds. So like your lo-fi sound can be called, you know, this brand name, your mm -hmm. R and B sound can be called this name. So it's, it's almost like you're building a label of different artists, but it's all yourself, you know? Yeah. Yep. It's like doing a, business as <laughs> here's the brand a, name. You're going to have a, a plethora of different styles and sounds. Yeah. Because you know, it's just alone, just going after pitches. You're going to have many different genres to do. Yeah. What do you do with the songs that don't make it? Yep. You can eventually release them. If, if and release it's, them as another monarchy. Set. Yeah. And as long as you enjoy making it, it's like, why not? You know? Yeah. So that's, there's always a place that you can stick your music where it's going to make you some money, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I always say this, but it's like every song is like a little piece of real estate, you know? Yeah. So you can sell it, you can rent it out, you can flip it, whatever you want to do, but just put it in a place where it makes you some money. Because I think if everybody, and I genuinely mean this, if everybody put their music in places that made them money, we'd have a lot more music out there. And that's a good thing, you know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So anyways, dude, I genuinely enjoyed chatting with you. This is great. Um, what, what advice would you give to anybody pursuing music? Um, stick to it and, and just try to ignore the haters. <laughs> yeah. Number two is the big one. Yeah, they, they will yeah. be there. <laughs> yeah. If you're doing your job right, you're going to have, I got a bunch of people who shit talk and I'm just like, all right, well, yeah, <laughs> happens. <laughs> You could push it and keep going because, like, yep. when you stop, that's when you start to get stagnant. And um, you don't want that because, you know, the music industry moves. Music is, is constantly in flux. So you got to keep keep going. Love that. Um, and where where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at ARKTKT Music at, you know, whatever. That's my handle. So I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, uh, Spotify, Architect Music, ARKTKT Music. And oh, um, man. I just put out an EP. Uh, well, not just, but a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> New one is coming soon, but um, 
yeah, check that out. It's called anima.exe. Awesome. Jared, thank you so much uh, for being on the That Pitch Podcast today. Uh, That Pitch Podcast is brought to you by Architect Music. Uh, Definitely check out all that music because he's sponsoring the show. Little does he know. Uh, <laughs> anyways, thanks so much, bro. I really appreciate it. Likewise. Good chatting with you, even you finally. So, <laughs> hell yeah. All right.